Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Bish's RV today with the 260 BHS Tracer in the LE series. They're just kind of smarter class kind of camper. And that's what I call this. Um, because there's a lot of people like, if, if what you're looking for is something that is half ton towable, but has a slide for plenty of space, has bunks for your family, but you don't want a stick and tin camper and you don't need flashy razzmatazz over the top. That's where this one comes in. And some of my other YouTube friends that I've met by doing this have asked me, why do you spend time on these campers that don't get as many clicks? Why do you spend time on these campers that don't get as many views? Because that's what's different about our channel. The channel that we're running here, this is not about what gets the most clicks and the most views. This is about what helps the largest number of people. And the fact is, this is one of the most popular bunkhouses in the entirety of the Bish's RV organization. And you can find it at nearly every single one of our locations. And I wanted to be able to help and reach as many people as possible. And I, this kind of camping works very nicely for me. This speaks very loudly to me because I'm a simple camping person. I don't drive a fancy car. I don't need a fancy camper. And I have no judgment for people that do, but I don't need all that. And if that sounds like you, if you're like, look, I, you know, it's under 5,500 pounds with a super slide. First of all, that is hard to find. Secondly, the colors are nice and light and bright. It has private sleeping for the bedroom, albeit with a uh, camp queen bed. You know, it's got its high points, it's got its low points. I've got a loud tractor coming by me here, so hopefully that's not drowning out the microphone. But I am a guest at this location, and I'm not gonna fault somebody for doing their job. My point in what I'm getting at in all this is sometimes just enough is all you need, and they do just enough, and then just a little bit more in here. And that's what I like about them. They know how to stay in their lane. And I actually kind of want to begin by, let, let's get the deal breakers out of the way. Let's talk about the stuff that isn't awesome on this camper so we can just go back about focusing on what's good. First of all, let's get this discussion done. Yeah, this is not a floor plan that is made with the idea of watching a lot of TV. First of all, it doesn't even come with a TV. Secondly, that is the definition of a 90 degree neck wrecker entertainment center, brother. But... Um, that island style entertainment center also allows the floor plan to maintain a private bedroom in the smallest length possible. Um, there is carpet in the slide. If that's a deal breaker for you, let's get that out of the way. Um, you know, it's those kind of things that I, I just want, let's just, let's just acknowledge it. Let's just move on about our merry way and let's focus on what's good because there is a lot of good here. Personally, now this is subjective. I like the color palette in here. This, um, what, I, I'm a guy, so I suck with the names and colors. Is this taupe? Like, what is this grayish decor? Is that what taupe looks like? <laughs> what I have learned is that women have within their heads a 72-pack or more of crayons. I have maybe a six-pack, and they're not all crayons, if you follow me. <laughs> now, pardon the, uh, the dirty footprints. That is my fault, um, just with the weather that's been around here and me stomping around a lot. I've tracked a little bit of stuff in. The good news is that you're not going to deal with my dirty footprints when you take the RV home for two reasons. One, when this is concluded, I'm going to go get a broom and sweep this thing out. Uh, secondly, because we clean the RVs at no charge for you before you take them home. And I know that sounds like a stupid thing to talk about. You may not realize how that is very non-standard behavior through a lot of the RV industry. Now, over here, this is a sleeper sofa upgrade. We're going to come back and look at that in just a minute. But that is not the standard jackknife sofa. It does, to me anyway, feel a, uh, a little more comfortable when you're sitting on it. And, and for some reason right there, the word, uh, the phrase to me sounded a lot like Timmy, which reminded me of that movie Speechless with Michael Keaton. And was that Gina Davis where they were like political speech writers? And um, they were, and Christopher Reeves was in that. Why? Am, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have squirrel. I'm moving on. Um, sealed edge press membrane counter. There is storage below the dinette, but there's not storage doors or drawers to access it. That being said, converting the front side of that dinette into like an access panel, I don't suspect would be the hardest thing to do. That being said, I suck with tools. I'm good with a mouse and a keyboard. Um, I'm moderate at best with a camera. My presentations leave something to be desired at times. But uh, I believe somebody with more skill than me could turn that into a storage dinette. 14,500 BTU, bigger Furion Air standard in these, so you're not going to need to upgrade that. Also, let me get you over here. This is kind of cool because their stovetop is 
uh, venting. You know, it does vent heat outside, but it has that extra little vent skylight right there. Now, this is a non-laminated roof. So if you wanted to piggyback power into that vent to up fit to a power fan, you could do that right there. But once again, you, that is a... Uh, hold on. Be, I just ran my mouth. Let me verify because now I'm looking. I'm not sure that is ventilating. Oh, I don't think that is a vented stovetop hood. No, sir. No, ma'am. It is not. So apologies that I stated that incorrectly, but I've never claimed to be perfect. And my goal here is, you know, even if I have to say, hey, I'm stupid, I screwed something up, I, I want to make sure that you get that real good info on this stuff. This has an awesome kitchen, though. And that's the thing. Let's start talking about all the good stuff here. We've got a big super slide in about the smallest length bunkhouse you can get that still maintains a private bedroom. Uh, what is cool about this, though, is that most bunkhouses have not amazing kitchens. And, and frankly... This is one of the best I've seen, and I think it's a massively unsung quality in this camper. And I, I love this double door situation they have on, on the, I don't know, the back side of the kitchen. So, you know, you got your big pots, pans, stuff like that. You got space for it. I do kind of wish something around this kitchen was more wastebasket friendly. It doesn't really have a good wastebasket space, but I mean, it's got a lot of storage. I'm not going to knock it real hard with all the good storage it does have big farm sink but what's nice here is with this little cutaway you can stand directly in front of the sink here you are reaching a little bit to do your rinsing but i don't think it's bad but notice that you still have some good countertop prep space available to you because it's just such a long counter space there you got triple up plywood drawers but we do not have floor vents um, they could have given you four drawers, but with the cabinet side ducted heating, you do lose one drawer, but you gain the easier cleaning function. That is a 16-inch uh, oven right there. Um, and that extra chunk of cabinet space to the right of the stove, that extra cabinet there, that's the kind of stuff that you don't usually get in a floor plan like this. This one is just slightly bigger in that area. Going past our, that is one of the larger, I think, ever chill, 10.7 cubic foot DC compressor fridges. You know, now that I know that that uh, stovetop doesn't ventilate outside, I really wish that was a power vent fan. I do feel that's a tiny miss. Even, even something to help exhaust the heat would be nice there. Um, now, over here, this is a bunkhouse. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but kids need just an un incredible amount of storage space. So having what could be either a pantry or dresser space and a potential closet over here for the kids... That's super, super handy. You also saw the little pocket down there below the bunks. That's awesome duffel bag storage. You could also use it for, say, like doggy bed storage. And I mentioned how the dinette could be storage. I've done just kind of a sample here. I've fully pulled everything out of the way. Now, normally, you're not going to have to take the entire tabletop off. I did it just for easy um, visual purposes. But effectively, you've got a couple uh, storage chests here. And you see those posts? Well, next time you're towing your RV and some idiot cuts you off because they have to get to the red light that much faster than you for whatever reason, I want you to imagine the table set up like this. And I want you to imagine that you got a chance to actually roll down your window and talk to that person saying, Hey, buddy, I got a place for you to sit. But notice I said I want you to imagine those things. I don't want you to actually do those because the last thing I want is to like, you know, today, news at five, couple gets in fight, like Florida man gets in fight at rest stop. <laughs> claims Josh the RV nerd told me to tell this guy where to stick it. <laughs> that's not that's not going to look good on my resume. Now there's a cool thing here in the bathroom. They have double motion lighting and actually kind of like the kitchen is a surprise star this floor plan. The bathroom doesn't suck. Now it's a six and a half foot tall camper so my head is going to need to be in that skylight. But look at this gigantic shower. Oh there goes that motion light. I'll have to get in here and you know, put your left arm in and you shake it all about and then the light comes on. But look at this thing. You could get in here and uh, you could bathe the Doberman. I mean, that's a huge shower space and it even has its own little corner seat, which is kind of nice if you got a little hitch in your giddy up, you know. Um, other than that, you know, the bathroom is simple like the rest of the RV, but it's got, well, you know, as Baloo the Bear would say, the bare necessities and um with my stuffy head and my nasally voice as it is i don't think i need to sing any more of that warning dingbats are closer than they appear 
And in case you were curious why there was a little piece of cardboard against the bathroom door, this is why. The camper's not level. It keeps wanting to shut on me. Anyway, moving our way out here, we've kind of already sort of killed the living room, although it occurs to me, I told you we'd come back to the hide-a-bed, and we had not yet. So, um, unceremoniously, there it is. You might notice it's actually a traditional inner spring hide-a-bed, um, not like a memory foam trifold like you tend to find. Well, something that is nice here, though, is it does have those bedroom privacy doors, and it's almost interesting. The way that it suddenly shifts to a dark slider door, although the bathroom door is dark, but a dark door right there, it really, to me, man, it's like, it cuts the camper off. It's like, nope, this don't go up here. Um, We might be aggressively folding laundry, and, uh, you know, you, you kids don't belong up here. I'm not going to call that a shoe garage. Maybe it's a flip-flop shop. <laughs> Household outlets on both sides of the bed. That one could have been mounted a little straighter, admittedly. Um, very wide open, though. Uh, so if you're, feel or, you're claustrophobic, you're not going to feel too closed in here. Um, oh, I should have talked about this when we were talking about our deal breaker factors, but I'm not going to gloss over it. That's a camp queen bed. And that is all she's ever going to be. Because it comes right up to the wall. So kind of keep that in mind there. Um, there is something in this bedroom, though, I really want to give them credit for. Um, their bedroom door uh, slider hookup hardware. The little positive latches that they're using right here. They're going to do an amazing job of keeping that door held shut. Not just while it's brand new, but like after you've had the RV for years. If you've ever seen the RVs whose doors are held back by those plastic clips and like the little button snaps... Folks, I've seen a lot of used RVs, and I swear, over time, eventually, those things, they're just going to age out. They're going to wear out. They're going to break. Let's, uh, yeah, I think we're good. Road mode. Ooh, and this one, I tell you what, I wasn't sure how it was going to line up. It can have some excellent road mode. Sometimes when you see these peninsula countertops, they really boss up the room, but they left plenty of room to walk around that one. Also, you've got all of your main cabin lights like right next to the door there's a switch up here up high to keep it away from the little kid hands but i mean there's no toe tap and there's no travel trailer two-step required you can just track your way right through this thing the uh th the thing is though this can have full access and road mode if you remember to open the bathroom door before you close the slide out but if you're going to do that it's no longer latched and secured so you're going to need to do something to keep it kind of secured in place for transit. But if you do that, then it can uh, clear the slide fascia, and then you can do the hokey pokey and, uh, you know, Alakazam uh, some uh, s some illumination here in the uh, in the bathroom. I was trying to remember what Harry Potter's word, Lumos or something like that? I don't know. You know, here's a question. Why wouldn't they just mount the bathroom door opening the other way? then you wouldn't have to do the hokey pokey slide close dance. Huh. Well, neither here nor there. The fact is this is what they do and that's what you can do. And if you appreciate what we do, hit that subscribe button. And as long as you keep wanting to see road mode, folks, I'm going to keep doing road mode. And I tell you one thing that is nice, like if you look down that nice row of trailers right there, you don't have to go looking for trailers. We've got them in stock at Bish's RV. That is something that was uh, the last couple years kind of an issue that obviously we've been able to resolve. Now, I ask people all the time, if you could change one thing about this camper, what would it be? And for me, it's an easy change. I would personally like to see a power tongue jack on these. They've stuck on that Tracer LE series, the basic tracers, um, with a uh, just normal manual crank jack on the front right here save a little money. Um, I would personally still prefer a power tongue jack. The good news is that that is probably like one of the easiest upfit options that you, uh, you know you could ever ask for out there. You don't have to get it from the factory. That's something we can slap on the nose of this and it's not going to screw up your warranty, which is kind of nice. Now the all white exterior on this, um, a little plain, but also not a lot of graphics and not a lot of Nike Adidas swooshes. What they did, um, a little more you know, angular, a little more geometrical and kind of modern looking. I think it's going to age pretty well. They give it a nice pass through with a, a big door on both sides. That's a thing that a lot of brands will do is they'll give you a big door over here, 
then small door on the other side. The aluminum framework uh, under there, well, yeah, under the bed above us right here is going to help a little bit with tongue weight, not massively. And that's a motion light right here for the pass-through, which is kind of cool. Of course, though, you could just turn that off or on. Now, if I take a bit of a knee over here, you see we've got ourselves a gas grill quick connect right next to the door, which um, I, I like how it's close to the awning i suppose if it's a rainy day you could still do a little bit of grilling outside and i like how they left you an open area here where you're not going to smoke up your awning so depending on what you want to do with it on a given day i don't like having a hot cooking thing right next to the entry door with kids coming and going but at the same time nothing says you have to use it exactly next to those steps you could always have like a six foot hose and use it over here near the baggage door the other thing is <laughs> when the uh if you're grilling, you got your meat cooking or something like that right up next to the uh, the front of the campsite right there. Oh, you are going to make the neighbors jealous. The people walking by or riding by on their bikes, woo, they're going to smell what you're cooking. They're going to stop and join you for dinner. Depends on how much you put on. Maybe tell them bring their own. I don't know. You camp how you camp. Underbelly. This is actually a, a nice find. On this series, I almost expect... Even though I know this has a heated enclosed belly, every time I get back to one of these, I almost always expect it to have something like a uh, an open exposed belly. So again, they're doing the major things where they really matter. Jumping over to the back of the RV. I ain't gonna lie, I didn't jump that far. I'm not that athletic. I was a mathlete, not an athlete. Just giving you a little look at the uh, under the bunk storage cavity here. The, uh, the baggage doors, uh, one of the nice things on those is they do have the magnet holdbacks. And I tell you what, if those magnets can hold those baggage doors in place in this crazy Iowa wind, and I, I know that you folks probably can't really get a good feel for exactly how windy it is here today, but oh my good lord, I, uh, you know, it gets a little windy every now and then in Southern Michigan. Never like this, not like this, not every single day, man. They got some crazy Iowa wind out here. Um, the uh, RV does have a hot cold outside utility shower, which is located just uh, above the sewer hookups right there. God forbid you need to do a little bit of cleanup. It is nice to be able just to kind of rinse stuff down. Um, also, if the kids have been swimming in the lake or something like that, or you're cleaning up a mess of fish, it's nice to have a little kind of spot right there where you can, you can hose the kids off before they bring the turtle muck and slime smell into the RV. Um, <laughs> That reminds me of my brother when I grew up camping, seriously. I grew up camping um, at a place without hookups called Cade's Cove uh, on Dragon Lake in Coldwater, Michigan. It might, or it might be Batavia, Michigan, which basically isn't a place. But anyway, um, you know, we had a simple, no slide, 20 foot camper. I slept in one of those uh, fold down cabinet bunk things and my brother would stay up late at night and go out with the other boys at the campground and go down to the lake and go catfish, dogfish, muck fishing. And he would come back with his smelly muck fishing shoes and every single time slap them inside the camper when he got back, wake everybody up. And I, I just, I can't even tell you how many times my mother just absolutely lost her mind that he brought his stinky catfish shoes in the camper and woke everybody up again. There's no lesson to be learned here. There's no benefit uh, as relates to this camper to this story, other than maybe you could use the outside shower to waterboard my brother if he ever did it again. I just felt like sharing a little bit of my camping history because you folks do so much of that with me and I know that I like hearing about it. I don't know. So let me know what you think of her. Uh, again, I'm not expecting this to be my most popular video ever. I don't care about that. I care about you folks. That's why I spend all this time giving you the good, the bad, the ugly, showing the slides closed, wrestling with all the furniture and the cabinetry and all that stuff. I'm not doing it because it's fun. I'm not doing it like, I, I don't get paid by like, you know, YouTube monetization's not what's making my money. I'm doing what I do so that, you know, with your hard earned money, with your limited amount of vacation time that you have, you know how to spend your, your time and your money effectively. That's my goal. So when you're ready, folks, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone. Bye.